Here is how you can make your blue hour images more interesting using a little bit of Lightroom editing. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link you can find in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So this is our blue hour raw file. Right away, this looks very good, but there are still a few things we want to change. First off, we want to work on the exposure. At the moment, there are some very, very deep shadows and we do kind of miss some highlights in the sky as well. So first we want to go through the basic adjustments. Here, the first thing I'm doing is to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. I'm using Adobe Standard to just slightly lessen the contrast, which in turn gives me a little more control over it. Then I want to work on the brightness of the image by bringing up the exposure. Now, most of the image looks quite good, but we really need to be careful since we have two very concentrated areas with bright highlights and we don't want to overexpose them, losing details in those areas since those are very, very important for us. But right about here, the exposure looks fine. We can tweak it a little more. I want to bring down the highlights all the way just to be safe. We still have some nice details in those brighter spots. And at the same time, I'm going to bring up the shadows making these darker areas brighter. And I'm also going to increase the blacks for the same purpose. Now, I don't want to raise the blacks too much because I don't want to lessen the contrast too dramatically for this shot, but I think that right here is a good spot. To reintroduce a little bit of contrast, we can bring up the whites. And as I bring up the whites, of course, I'm paying close attention to the histogram because we don't want to overexpose anything. Let's go with something like this for now. In general, for this scene, I want it to be clear and sharp. So what I'm doing is to add texture. I'm also going to add a bit of clarity. And I do want to bring down the dehaze, which adds some very cool glow effect, especially around those highlights. I think this just looks good, but that's a personal thing you could make this image look a bit clearer by increasing the dehaze instead of decreasing it. So now at this point, let's take a closer look at the white balance. For this scene, I want to have these classic blue hour colors with the blue background and some nice yellow lights. This means we are pretty close for a good white balance. So that means for this image, I don't actually want to have a neutral white balance which would mean I would have to bring up the temperature somewhat to neutralize the blue part of the sky. However, doing this, we would run into more problems since those highlights are going to get way too yellow. If you would want to have a neutral white balance for this image, you would need to work on these areas separately. So the blue landscape and these yellowish highlights. Now, as I said, I want to have this classic blue hour look which means I'm going to drop the temperature a bit. Let's see. I think right about here looks good. Now you could work on the tint since I have a feeling there is a very, very subtle magenta color cast in those blue tones, but I think it's okay for now. So at this point, we might want to compare this image to before. You can see exposure wise, it looks much better. We did lose a little bit of saturation, but we're going to fix that later on. What I want to do next, however, is to bring some attention to a few areas by using local adjustments, also known as masks. So let's do that. Open up the masking panel. And for this image, that is really, really simple. What I want to do is to bring attention to the center and I'm doing this usually by adding some vignetting. For that, I'm using a linear gradient and I cover pretty much most of the sky like this. So I want to make the top area darker. Therefore, let's just bring down the exposure. I'm going to drop it quite a bit to get a very heavy vignetting effect. So maybe something like this. I'm going to bring up this linear gradient just a bit to not affect this lighthouse too much, but this looks good. We can stack another linear gradient on top. However, I'm making it slightly smaller. And again, I'm bringing down the exposure. This time, not as much, but still a little bit, just like this. Let's maybe make it even smaller. And let's take this one and also make it smaller. Okay, this looks great. Now, I also want to work on the foreground, for which I'm going to use a linear gradient. 
And with this one, I'm I want to kind of target all the reflections down here. I want them to be a little bit clearer. So what I'm doing here is to just add a bit of clarity and uh, so I'm just making them pop. Wonderful. Now we have created our vignetting effect. We made the reflection a little more interesting. Now what I want to do is to add some more highlights to the sky. I'm going to create a new color range mask. And with this eyedropper tool, I'm going to click right here in this bright spot of the sky. This will select a bigger range of blue tones. However, we can change that a bit. So let's say subtract and choose a linear gradient. I don't want to make the top part of the sky brighter. So I'm going to subtract it. Just want to have the part in the middle and make it brighter. Just like this. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to increase the whites. I might as well even add a bit of exposure. And I do think we can add some clarity as well. So this mask right here is super important to get a much more interesting image with a little more depth, as you can see when I turn it off and on. This makes a huge difference and brings way more attention to the center. Now that's pretty much it for the masking. I can deactivate all the masks real quick so you can see the difference from before, which is a rather boring flat image compared to the new version with the vignetting applied and this brightness effect in the center. All right, awesome. Now let's start to look at the colors one more time. I wanna go into the color mixer and what I wanna do is I wanna bring up the blue saturation. I'm going to raise it quite a bit to get this very deep blue color tone in here. And I also wanna raise the orange saturation which will affect the highlights. Let's maybe even raise the yellows very, very slightly. All right, that looks much better. We can also head into the luminance tab and we can give this image some more contrast by bringing up the orange luminance. Just be careful to not overexpose anything since this will make the orange highlights brighter, which are already kind of bright. We could even increase the blue luminance to make the surrounding landscape a little brighter, just like this. And again, let's compare to before without color mix adjustments. And that's the image with the color mix adjustments. I don't think that's visible in this video, but it does make a big difference. Okay, I do wanna add a little more blue to this image. I'm going to use the color grading tab for that, also known as split toning. So I'm gonna use the shadows, set the hue to something cold, and let's gently raise the saturation. I just want to have some more blue tones in the shadows. I don't want this to be too much, just a little bit like this. Okay, and finally, we can also head into the calibration tab. And what I wanna do here is to just bring up the saturation of all these three color sliders. So red, green, and blue. Okay, now the colors do look really, really awesome. We are almost done with this blue hour edit. Just one more thing I want to do in Lightroom, which is the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm applying the same settings as for every image. I'm dropping the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down the Alt key, just like this. Even some sensor spots will now be sharpened, but that doesn't matter. And I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening. Perfect. And as you just saw, this image has a ton of sensor spots, which we want to remove. So we could do this in Lightroom. However, I prefer to use Photoshop because there's also a huge sensor spot overlapping this lighthouse, as you can see. So I'm going to switch over to Photoshop for that. Right click on the image, edit in and choose Photoshop. And as always, I'm creating a backup layer just to be safe by hitting Ctrl J. Now let's zoom in and look for sensor spots, which I remove with the spot healing brush. By the way, I did clean the camera sensor right away after I saw this mess. So I hope the next images won't have as many sensor spots. Okay, now on to this big sensor spot right here. I do think I'm just going to use the new remove tool. And I'm just going to roughly paint over this bottom part and let's see if this works. It does not work. Let's try it one more time. Well, 
we just need to brush over it a few more times, I guess. Really a shame. I could also try using the clone stem tool to get a better result here. So it doesn't look perfect, but it's such a small area that, that I don't think it's making a big difference. Okay, so now that we have cleaned up this image, we are done editing this blue hour scene. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting as always. If you have questions left about the editing, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.